Hey, what's up everybody? Terry White here and it's May, May 2024 and that can only mean one thing. That's right, my birthday is later this month, but no, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the annual, I think it was last May too, the annual photography release from Adobe. Now that doesn't mean we don't get releases other times of the year like at Adobe Max and other times, but usually the team gets one out around spring, summer, and once again, it's May, and I'm here to show you what's new in the photography release for Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom on mobile, and even Lightroom Web. So I'll talk about some general features that are across the ecosystem, meaning if the feature I talk about, if I just talk about it, you can it's in all the platforms I just talked about. So it's on your Lightroom Classic, it's on your Lightroom desktop, it's on Lightroom on your phone, iPad, so forth and so on. And then I'll get into some specifics with Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom Classic on your desktop. So let's start off with one of the biggest changes of all, and that is for the first time, Generative AI powered by Firefly is coming to Lightroom. It's here, so let's check it out. I'm gonna give you three examples so I can show it to you on three different platforms as well. So let's start off on Lightroom Classic, which is where I live most of the time. And let's head over to the develop module with this image. And let's go to the remove tool. Let's go up here and grab the remove tool. And it is now the generative remove tool. Now the remove tool is still great if you just wanna use it the way you always did to remove simple things. So if I just wanna click and remove a simple thing, I can do that. And that does not use AI, I just undid it, by the way. But if you do have something more complicated that you wanna remove, such as this sign that you can't even read, that would normally mean a trip to Photoshop to clone it out, spot heal it out, or use uh, generative fill to fill that in. Now you don't have to go to Photoshop anymore for that. You can just turn on generative AI, and now the remove tool becomes a generative remove tool. And I could go ahead and brush and do it, but there's one more option here I wanna point out, and that is there's object aware. Now object aware is optional. You don't have, both of these are optional. You don't have to use either one, but object aware is optional. And when it's on, it'll create a mask automatically of the object it thinks you're trying to select. So you can increase your brush size. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start brushing around this sign. And of course I'm going over the edges and that's okay. We'll fill in the middle and uh, when I let go, the first thing it'll generate is the mask. So that's what I mean. That red area is what it thinks it needs to remove. And if you need to add more or, or, or subtract, you can do that from the add and subtract buttons over here on the right. You can also increase your brush size here. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my brush a little smaller using the keyboard. I'm just going to go ahead and get the little stem for this sign. And if you try to do this with the move tool, you know that it's not gonna be pretty. But now for the first time, I can go ahead and click apply and the apply button will uh, use generative fill to fill this in for the first time in Lightroom. And there we are. Now, just like in Photoshop, if I'd use generative fill, with the new generative remove tool here in Lightroom, I get the same option to choose between three different results. And if I didn't like any one of those three, I can hit the refresh button and generate three new ones. So there's my first one, which is okay. I like the second one, but I think I like the third one the best because the third one doesn't leave any residue. It kind of just really does a great job. So that's the new generative remove tool in Lightroom Classic. Now let's go take a look at it over in Lightroom on desktop as well. So I'll head over to Lightroom. I've got the same photo, it hasn't synced yet, but I'm gonna to go to a different photo. As a matter of fact, let's go to, uh, let's go to this one. Uh, I got this guy kind of hanging out in the background here and you're trying to get the, the beautiful shot of the bird and the guy's in the way. And again, you could try to use the remove, remove tool as it was before, but you're probably not gonna like the results as much because it's just too complicated. If it were something simple like getting rid of a leaf or getting rid of a little speck here and there, Remove Tool is great for that. But let's go to the Remove Tool here. I've got Generative AI and I've got the Object Aware already turned on. I also wanna point out, one time I had the opacity down to 50% by accident and it only removed 50% of the object. And I was like, whoa, why can I see through it now? So just make sure your opacity is on 100 unless you do want it to be less. All right, so once again, we'll just go ahead and paint over the guy here. 
and painting, painting, painting. I usually do the outside first and then fill it in. And of course you can definitely use a bigger brush, but you get the idea. And then as soon as I let go, because I have object aware turned on, it'll create a mask. And if I want to add to it, I can add to it. So if I want to subtract from it, I'd hit subtract and subtract from it. Now I can hit apply and let generative fill do its thing just like it would in Photoshop and just like it would on the Firefly website. And once again, we get result number one, two, and three. I kind of like number two or three the best. Let's see. And here's my before. There's my after, just like that. Oh, maybe number two, I don't know. But you get the idea. So you go in and use generative remove on Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Desktop. But wait, I've got my phone right here, my iPhone. And of course it works on Android as well. Let's go into my phone. I've got an image sitting here as well. We got the photo bomber here ruining the, uh, the group selfie. And I'm just gonna go to the remove tool. Now the difference on the phone is that we don't have the uh, object aware yet, but I can still go in and do the same thing. So I can, I can see my brush size before I start brushing, which is cool. And then I'll just go ahead and start brushing this guy out. And uh, the only difference is because I also, uh, I should say the other only dif the other difference is, uh, is that as I brush, if I let go, it will start to uh, do the remove. It won't pause like the other one and let me uh, hit apply. So I'm just gonna make sure I brush it all first so that I don't have to do it in multiple passes. Now this is using generative um, remove, just like on desktop. So it's going to the cloud and doing that thing that it does. Now you still get the same three choices. You just hit refine. And in the refine area, you can go in and see your same three results. Ooh, I kind of like that result the best. And that is generative remove on Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom on your phone, iPad, and Lightroom Web, and Camera Raw. It's everywhere that, that the developed features exist. All right, so that's step one. Step two, feature number two. Let's head over back over to Classic. And in Classic, I'm going to go over to my next image here, uh, away from that series of images that we were uh, removing. And let's go to this image. And you kind of notice in this image where the background's kind of really in focus. Uh, all the way over here, things are kind of really in focus. Uh, so I want to go ahead and create a little more shallow depth of feel. And for that, we've got a great AI-powered uh, lens blur. So lens blur was early access. Uh, now it is generally available. We call that GA. So that means that it is, we, we think we've, we've fixed it. We've done it the way you asked us to do it. So we took your feedback when it was early access and then we uh, released the features that you asked for. So I hit apply and that will automatically look at the subject, automatically uh, create a, a, a depth map. So there it is. It did that with AI and it figured out what the background is and, and that depth of field. Okay, so I could do all kinds of cool things now. I can control the amount of blur. So if we zoom in on this, here, let's click and zoom in. Uh, here's my before and there's my after. So that's how much blur it's doing. I can, of course, turn it down and I can even change the shape of the bokeh. So this is pretty cool to be able to do this, especially when you're zoomed in so you can really see what it looks like. I don't know, I kind of like the circles. I think they're cool, but I can go with any one of these and uh, zoom out. Now, you also have the ability to change the focal range. So I can move the focal range around and choose what's in focus and what's not in focus. And I can expand the focal range to have more things in focus or less things in focus just by dragging one of the handles. Uh, now, another refinement is that the, the brush, so you can brush more things in focus or brush more things out of focus. So just for the sake of example, if I want to come over here and brush one of these buildings back into focus, I could. You wouldn't do that, but I could just to show the example that it can be done. And there have been refinements to the brush. There have been refinements uh, to uh, just the overall algorithm to avoid holes and bad selections. Um, the changes to the brush makes it more visible. And also now it supports batch workflows. So you could apply a brush preset 
and there's some new adaptive presets, which we're going to cover next. So that is the lens blur uh, now generally available and of course across the ecosystem. So I'm showing it in classic. I could pop over to Lightroom desktop and show it there. I could pop onto my phone and show it there because it's in all the places. I'm not going to show it in all the places, but it's there. All right. So now let's jump out of that one and let's go to the next one. Now this next one, I could absolutely go into the develop module and use lens blur, but I'm going to go into the develop module and do something different. I'm not going to use lens blur, at least not from this panel. I'm going to go over to the new set of adaptive presets, uh, adaptive blur background. So uh, because we now have the power of lens blur throughout Lightroom's ecosystem, we can create adaptive presets that automatically select the background and automatically apply a subtle amount of blur. Why would you do it this way instead of the, the panel? Because this is faster. This is like, oh, I, I know I want to blur the background um, by a subtle, or let's, let's go ahead and do strong. Let's do a strong amount. And by the way, I get a preview first and it does it. And here's my, uh, here's my before, there's my after. And it, 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 and you can see it applied the lens blur for me. It did everything for me. So even though I just did a preset, it's showing me what it's going to do uh, what it did basically in the panel. So that's taking the power of lens blur and making it a batch workflow by just allowing you to create your own adaptive presets or using the Adobe ones as well. So there's a subtle one, very subtle. And here's a strong one. And again, here's your before, there's your after. And it's just cool to be able to do that now with your presets, whether you use ours or whether you create your own. Okay, so those are the things that are generally, and by the way, performance improvements across the board. Those are the things that are generally available across the Lightroom ecosystem. Now let's, and by the way, the generative remove is early access just like lens blur used to be. So we're still fixing it, tweaking it, making it great for you. Give us your feedback. Let us know how you like generative remove and what you like to see done better. But right now, it's available to everyone to try in your various respective versions of Lightroom. Okay, so now let's get into some specific features across Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom Classic. Let's switch over to Lightroom Desktop first. And in Lightroom Desktop, it was there before, but it wasn't straightforward. So what we hear a lot, or what I hear a lot especially is, hey, I'm running low on cloud space. How can I remove some of the images from the cloud? So for example, um, you might be in a spot where you've got multiple shots, multiple frames of the same shot or multiple ones that you just don't need. And, and you wanna say, hey, like for example, this shot of Big Ben, I don't really need that one. Can I just remove it from the cloud, remove it from Lightroom? Don't delete it, I just wanna archive it. I wanna pull it down from the cloud, put it in a folder. It's no longer in Lightroom anymore and it's in my folder. So that is now a feature in edit menu, archive, I only select it one, so one photo uh, locally. You can select a batch of photos, all you know, hundreds of photos that you wanna archive. So once I choose this, I will then be able to tell it where, what drive, what external drive, what NAS to put it on, and uh, include, uh, put them all into one folder if they're in multiple spots. And uh, if there's existing ones already, keep both, delete one, re you know, replace, you know, so forth and so on. And it will, if I do this, it's saying it's removing one photo will save uh, up to so much space. So it's letting me know how much space I'm going to get back as well. Now, again, it's removing it from the cloud. It's not deleting it from forever. It's deleting it or it's removing it from the cloud and putting it in the folder that you designate up here. And that will be your copy to now you have to manage the backup of that of those images because they're no longer in the cloud being backed up. So just keep that in mind. They're now your responsibility to keep track of. Okay, so that is one of the first things that is Lightroom desktop specific. The next one is kind of fun. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my five star rated images and videos in this particular one. It's a basic slideshow feature. So uh, Lightroom Classic has had a slideshow feature for years. It does all kinds of things. It exports videos and, and movies and, and, and or PDFs, I should say, and you can add music and all that. This is, just a, this is just the beginning, just the start of a slideshow. 
So you select the album, the images you want to show, whatever's visible. You hit start slideshow. Your slideshow will go full screen and it will just start playing. You don't have to do anything else. It just starts playing your slideshow. Now, you do have a little bit of control. If you just move your mouse, your cursor, you'll be able to jump back and forth, pause it, stop it, as well as pop up the menu, tell it whether or not, I think it loops by default. I never understood that. But anyway, in case I guess you were, you know, wanted to loop on a, on a stage where you're not really presenting, you just wanted to be there. You can also choose, change the speed from fast, medium, slow, extra slow. So right now it's on medium. And I don't know, that seems to be about five seconds. I just switched it to, oh, I didn't switch it at all. Switch it to fast. There we go. And we'll put the menu away. And yeah, fast is maybe one, two, three. Yeah, like three seconds. So three seconds are fast, maybe five seconds for medium. You do the math, you can go from there. Okay, so that is the new uh, basic slideshow. It's just slideshow in Lightroom desktop under the view menu, just start slideshow and it'll start it for whatever you're looking at. All right, next up um, in the new, uh, or what's new in Lightroom desktop specifically, if I edit this video, there's a video here. And if I hit play, that's cool. I can, if I hit play, there we go. We can play the video and that's cool. It'll start playing. And uh, this was from my drone. Um, when I went over to Max London, I just shot a drone video real quick of a tower bridge here. And uh, that's cool. But one of the things I really like about Lightroom desktop is that it really is starting to get into more and more features of being able to, um, to style that video, like to edit it like you would a photo. So one of the things that's brand new for video in Lightroom Desktop is curves. That's right, for the first time, you can actually apply curves to your video. And this is kind of cool to be able to do this right here in the curves panel. And of course you can use preset, oh, I didn't mean to add that next point. Let's undo that, there we go. You can add um, points, you can of course, um, uh, change it for a specific color values. Basically the way you would use curves on a photo has now been brought to curves on video. And so now, even though I did it on that one frame I was looking at, it's doing it across the entire video. So curves adjustments for video for people that like to work in curves. All right. I'm not a curves guy, but I know a lot of you are next up. And this one is kind of just like you would, like I wouldn't have noticed this because I just wouldn't have noticed it. But you notice when you go to the grid, you've got two grid views actually. I hit the letter G, it brought me to the grid where it kind of like fills the grid with the images with no space in between. And if you hit the letter G again for grid, it will show you the, the standard grid, kind of the same grid you would see in Lightroom Classic. This is the part I wouldn't have noticed is that now they brought the file names there. This was a big miss for Lightroom desktop users that were, especially if you were used to Lightroom Classic, because you would see your images, but you just wouldn't know what the original file names were. It brings them in, it just doesn't show them to you until now. So you might wonder, well, where are they headed with that? Are you gonna let me rename them at some point? I don't know, you never know with the Lightroom team. But anyway, uh, that is the last, uh, last thing for Lightroom desktop that is new specifically to desktop. Now let's switch over to Lightroom Classic. And some of these things I'm just gonna talk through because I, I don't really have an example to show you. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk to them anyway. So first and foremost, I'm a big fan of Lightroom Classic because I shoot in studio. And in studio, I like to use Tether Capture with my Nikon camera. And that's been a staple of Lightroom Classic for years. And it's only supported until now various Nikon and various Canon cameras until now. There's a third choice now. The long awaited Sony option has been added. Now it's not every Sony camera has ever been invented. It's specific Sony models. I don't have the list handy, but of course we'll publish that list of which Sony cameras are supported. But now you can natively tether to Lightroom Classic without any additional software for those specific Sony models so we're finally got the one of the most requested brands for tethering is here. 
Okay, uh, so that's, like I said, I don't have a Sony camera to talk about this with, so I can't show it, but there it is. Uh, or, or it will be there for those of you who have the specific models. All right, next up, let's talk about syncing. So I've got um, sync, my syncing turned on for this catalog. This is my main catalog that I use. And of course I use it for syncing as well. Syncing now jumps to version two in Lightroom Classic. Syncing has been around for years, but uh, the, the architecture under the hood has been changed. Now, of course, this means that your catalog will need to be upgraded. Typically, we don't do a catalog upgrade until it's a full dot, a full release. Like we're on 13. Dot, this is now 13.3 of Lightroom Classic. We normally wouldn't ask you to upgrade the catalog until 14. But because of the architecture and the under the hood improvements, you will need you will be asked when you launch Lightroom uh, when you update and you launch your catalog, it will do the usual hey, uh, you need to update your catalog, we'll make a copy and create a new catalog based on that copy for the new version to work. And what you should see once all the syncing gets updated is a smoother, less problematic syncing of your images uh, to the cloud. Now, of course, it's still the same syncing that it used to do, so it's only smart previews, it's not videos. It will sync videos down from the cloud, but it won't sync them up and um, all the same things that you were used to that syncing worked with. So it doesn't do smart uh, collections, it doesn't do any of the things it didn't used to do, but it should work smoother and better for syncing going forward. All right, here's another one. Um, let's say that you want to know which of these images have been exported. Oh, I don't know. Which ones have been exported? I, I wouldn't know that in the past. Well, now there's a new filter for it. If I go to my metadata, I've already switched one of my tabs to a new option, exported files. So it will show me which of the ones here. I can say, hey, show me which ones I've already exported. Oh, I've exported that one. Okay, cool. Go back to all. Let's export this one now. So let's go to file. I'm going to export it with a preset. And I'll export it with my web gallery preset without copyright. So don't put a watermark on it. And it will just go ahead and, and show it to me. So it did export that photo. And now you'll notice it says two images have been exported. Two files have been exported. So I can see which ones have been exported. Now, this is kind of cool. You can filter on it. You can use it in smart collections. You can use it basically anywhere you would want to know um, where things have been, which ones have been, or which images have been exported in a particular collection or, or all your photos, I guess. So um, just another filtering option for those of you who use Lightroom Classic. All right, uh, next up, uh, just two things to just mention in passing. As always, performance enhancements, GPU enhancements to make Lightroom faster, better, better, faster, stronger, and some new additional metadata support. All right, so that's what's new in the May release available today of the Lightroom ecosystem because it's not just Lightroom Classic, it's not just Lightroom, some of you refer to as cloud, it's not just Lightroom Mobile, it's stuff across the board and then some specifics in each app. So I hope you enjoy this update, go grab your update. And if yeah, a lot of people say, hey, I don't see it yet. Uh, remember, sometimes it takes time to propagate the updates wherever you live. And also one of the quickest ways is to um, reboot Reboot your computer because then Lightroom desktop starts up. I'm sorry, Creative Cloud desktop starts up again and then you can check for updates if you don't see it right away. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you like, what you didn't like, what you want to see more of. And also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Cheers, everybody. Bye.